Hello everyone, and welcome to this brand new video on Space in Years 2 and V-Ray 3. So as you can see by the title, this is literally everything we know. Before we get into the video, if everyone can please fill out the survey in the description. I want to get as many responses as possible for an upcoming video about Space Engineers 2. Anyway, on with the video. First you're going to shout at me, Ran, V-Ray 3 doesn't explicitly mean Space Engineers 2. I know, I know, we'll get to that. Firstly, okay, V-Ray 3 is a brand new game engine. And here is the thing, it's a brand new game engine using new physics and it's been confirmed by Keen externally, internally and by some Keen moderators I've talked to that V-Ray 3 is not coming to Space Engineers 1 at all. What could V-Ray 3 be used for? Some people have suggested that it would be licensed to other studios or made to new, make a new game entirely. Roman Engineers have been patented by Keen as people have pointed out. Here is the thing though, the moment that Keen tries to do anything other than Space Engineers or a space game, it doesn't exactly go well. We had the whole medieval engineer scandal and we had the whole AI people scandal just recently where everyone in the live stream basically went crazy that this was being streamed on the Space Engineer channel when it wasn't space related or space engineers related. They neglected to realise the fact it was being developed by good AI, not Keen. So entirely different. I don't think that was a bit of misleading on Keen's part because I thought it was AI people for Space Engineers which they said they are are possibly coming. Logically, I think Space Engineer 2 makes the most sense. Furthermore, all the stuff demonstrated in V-Rage 3 is applicable to Space Engineers, and we've also seen some new blocks. Okay, so it kind of almost cements it in my mind that unofficially, like, Space Engineers 2 is confirmed. I think they haven't confirmed it yet because it's still like six years away, and I'll go through my logic of that later on. But first, we're going to go on to V-Rage 3. What is it? what the requirements, what can it do, how far away is it, and all of that lovely stuff. But firstly, I would like to say this video has taken quite a few hours of research in the sense that I've gone through Jan's entire Twitter page and some of his artists as well to find everything, and I mean, do mean everything, on V-Rage and Space Engineers 2. But without further ado, we're going to stop messing around and actually go into it. Firstly, V-Rage 3 is a brand new game engine that is being developed with hazard physics, okay? So, firstly, the features are it's multi-platform from the start with every decision and every other platform taken into account, as shown here. There are better modding possibilities and better modding systems, single development tool to author all assets, which will be available to modders, and most of the systems are implemented from scratch with very little being reused. Now, as stated by Jan here, they actually investigated some different engines, but none could support what they wanted to do, so they went to the latest Havoc. So they went to be building V-Rage 3 with the Havoc 2022 physics engine. And we'll go into more of the physics engine in a second. But basically, these are the main differences. Uh, Data-oriented architecture, a GPU-driven pipeline, which will free up CPU usage significantly, new graphic systems, thread-safe parallelization, and dynamic global lighting using ray tracing. And some of you are getting ahead of me and basically saying, does that mean ray tracing is basically confirmed? Yes, yes it is. So first we're actually go, gonna go with the physics engine and detailing what the physics can actually do. So some of you may have seen this already, but they actually tested a bunch of physics engines. So basically, SE1's Havoc 2025 had mainly had problems with phantom forces, unstable wobbly constraints ch chains, and support for high mass ratios. Basically, clang. So they started with Unreal Engine's Chaos Engine, and basically very similar to Havoc 2012. And then lots of problems with NVIDIA's little game engine here, and I think just wow, sums it up with how terrible it went. They tried it again, and in a separate sandbox, and still had a lot of clang, basically. Then they tried Uni Engines, again, more clang. Then they tried the Havoc 2022 version, which is basically everything's stable, everything works, 400 km world. Here is where it gets a little more fun, in the sense that we have a couple more features, such as we have possible wind and definite aerodynamics, a lot more subgrid stability, and just, as I said earlier, the elimination of clang, a lot of uh, improved debugging, as well as that, they've done quite a few tests. For example, with this galaxy test here, each one of these white dots are planets, and all of this is kind of spinning in a circle. Anyway, regardless of the capabilities aside, what are the possible specs, I hear you asking? That's been answered in the sense that if V-Rage 3 systems fail, there is a fallback to the V-Rage 2 system for low-powered machines. However, the 
1050 is significantly the low minimum spec. So I would say it's probably going to start off. If I had to guess, it'll be the, the first ray tracing card. So I'd say it's maybe 2050, 2060. I would say that is a bit of a guess. All right. Don't hold me to that. It's just a guess. But I think that's probably round about where it's going to be. But I mean, I feel like in six years, everyone will have one. So, and the thing is, that's going to be round about where it is. We may be even looking higher at maybe a 3060. I think that's unlikely, but I feel like 2060 kind of thing may be like the minimum. But I feel like 3060 could be recommended. Or like recommended minimum, because they like doing those. As for when is it coming? Well, here's the thing. Why do I keep saying 60 years? Well, Jan said there are around 30 programmers working on it currently. And that the time frame for it actually being completed is a few years ago. Now, if we say around, that's around three years, then it'll still take them a couple of years to actually develop Space Engineers 2. So I'd say mm, six years, if, I'd say it could be a high end, it could be a low end, I really don't know. That's my rough guess, it's saying three years for each. But here's the thing, it depends how much they have so many of the textures from Space Engineers 1 that they can literally update and bring across. And there's already some stuff implemented in V-Rage 3 already. So it may literally be only like a year or two until we have Space Engineer 2 after V-Rage 3. But I still think V-Rage 3, they say a few million years, I don't think it's just going to be one or two. I think it's closer to three or four. And then if they take a year to get Space Engineer 2 out the door, which is still very fast, then, you know, that'll only be like four or five years. So I'd say six is a kind of a good estimate. It could be high end, it could be low end. It could be bang on, I don't know, but I'm saying probably 2030. So yeah, I'm saying 2030 is a safe bet. Anyway, on to the bugs and the quality of life features, and basically all the stuff that's from Space Engineers 1 that we all hated, and all the bugs, and what's going to get fixed, and what isn't. Although to be fair, I haven't found a lot of what's not going to be fixed. So, firstly we're going to start off with the basic stuff. Shadows. So basically all the like the light bleeding problems and some of the like shadow problems uh, that we had in like Space Engineers 1 have basically all been fixed and we're basically getting improved shadows using various techniques such as like shadow cascades uh, as well as like Poisson sampling which of course is detailed here we've got improved anti-aliasing and we've got some examples here and honestly the shadows are looking like so much sharper honestly the shadows are all looking uh, pretty good so here as well, we've got even more improvements uh, with like local light shadows and uh, that sort of thing. And we can just see here, it, they're just better. They've got shadows which disconnected. And here we go. Here we've got the light bleeding, which has been solved. Look, look at that. That's perfect. That's going to improve like so much asteroid and like shadowing stuff. That's going to be hidden. And uh, we've got local lighting as well. So it's going to be uh, good for particles, good for interior lighting of cockpits as well and that sort of thing and yeah they've got a couple of cool demonstrations here uh, honestly it looks very very cool now going on for this as well we do have like improved uh, shaders they've got an improved uh, atmosphere shader here and honestly i think this just looks absolutely beautiful like look at look at that look at the horizon look at that and just the, the sunrise and the actual atmosphere itself with the water absolutely stunning going on from shaders and the shadows and the lights we've also got ray tracing so we have this beautiful engine render here with proper reflections as well but we also have uh, more and more like planetary overlays as well as the block update so uh here we are like look at look at all of this so we've got uh reduced fog to account for these but honestly like the variation with these planets the planets look so much more lifelike now and actually, like, feel like you're going towards the planet instead of, you know, a kind of misty orb. And we've got a lovely kind of render here of, like, the better planet transitions as well. Now, one thing I will theorize with this is I think we may actually get re-entry as they have uh, done aerodynamic. So I don't think it'll look as beautiful as this in the base game. But honestly, like, it still looks amazing. And of course, they're, uh, they're still polishing it and improving, like, the ground tessellation, that sort of thing. And because of this uh, planetary system as well, we've also got improved like global illumination to, get, to help with like the interior of buildings as well, uh, as well as the actual planet itself. Now, the next thing we're going to go on to is armor deformation and crash test. So basically, we've had a massive improvement to the way kind of armor and the kinetic energy is going to transfer and how crashing will work. 
So uh, we've got the idea of like this how crashing on fan could look like. This is what it could be on Rocky, but obviously on a rock, as Jan says, it damages the ship more than it does the actual terrain. But uh, that's very cool. And what's even more fascinating about this is the fact that the kinetic energy regarding these will actually be transferred. So uh, we've got a lovely little diagram here uh, that Jan has demonstrated. But with these crashing together, it's going to be very interesting. And also they've done some like better balancing here. So we've got another demonstration on the sand and a rock. Here we are. And based on sliding as well for the box. So the ships will actually slide across the surface. And probably bounce around like that one James Bond movie. And uh, obviously they're working on combining these both of these systems together. And they're basically almost there. So honestly I look forward to how crashing is going to work. And obviously with this crashing system we are going to have it for the blocks to actually kind of break and fly apart instead of just breaking. They are stated to be merely aesthetic but uh, we'll go on to that later. Now we're going to go on to the more nuanced little bug fixes and that is stuff like the better modding support that we have and like various performance kind of improvement. Like here, here's a stress test they did and honestly it's a little insane but we're also going to have stuff like uh heat hazes as well and sun hazes so a little more a little more detailing there and i feel like heat heat hazes coming off vents could be very very cool as well as that we also have underground ore and like a different way that ore is going to be generated so we're actually going to have different materials underground like minecraft which i think is going to be like very cool it's like uh like that minecraft update where they throw in diorite and andesite into the ground instead of it all just being stone and uh, we have a little tease of lava here as well so possibly we're getting lava and uh, obviously the ore distribution it, it's implied here that they're going to kind of procedurally generated and generated per planet so multiple ore rules per biome with different probabilities and that there, there we are now we're going to go on to the planetary surface improvement we've touched on this earlier but basically we've got um the idea that you won't be able to see the voxel damage from space. As Solaris on Twitter asked, will all this fix the issue of being able to see small holes on underground caves from space currently in V-Rage 2 underground gaps? And Jan says, currently the overlay does not contain the change to the planet further, so for now yes, but that's something we would like to fix. Jan actually kind of says that, for now they've got it fixed because you can see no voxel damage from orbit at all, but it seems the goal is that they want you to be able to see it, but it not to be as big of a problem so since you can't see underground bases but you can see like where people have like damaged the surface in a big way which honestly i think is going to be good and also we're getting a massive fix to plants bet not fight with me on twitter uh if their plans or testing schedule for more diverse flora and fauna i think that the weather system v2 would create inverted environments hopefully something with specific study brands that could potentially be influenced by player actions jan says we have major improvements planned for flora but much later on in the roadmap no fauna is planned one thing I will say about the current flora, I do think that it needs a massive improvement because currently if you crash into a tree, like it kind of just disappears. Like it doesn't really even break your part of your OV, you just kind of stop and it falls over and then it kind of disappears. Basically they need to improve like the collision physics and the, like the, how it falls over and that sort of thing. And I mean, even potentially, like, we could get a resource from the trees. That that would be kind of nice. Like, that could be uh, a way to have, like, you know, wooden panels on your ship. Cause, uh, because I love my, like, wooden kind of panels and wooden dashes and that sort of thing. I think they look so cool. Now, uh, next thing we're going to go on to kind of will dip into the newer stuff. And that is... Uh, water kind of reflection and the reason i put it in here is because even though you know we ha we're discussing water later on it's just important to consider that the the shadow improvements and uh, like the refraction and the ray tracing have actually all been applied to the water so we've got you know we've got shadows we've got depth fog and uh fully ray marched as well and here here we are as well like there are Obviously, this is all just programmer art, so this isn't how it looks, but they've clearly been making a lot of progress here. And yeah, and then we've also got extended with this. We've, we've also got the idea of like lagoons and swamps and like early tests of like ponds with like swampy water and just early tests of water on planet and that sort of thing. And of course, multiplayer has already been implemented into v 3 as well. But now, now with all the bug fixes and quality of life out of the way, we're going to go on to the new features. So hilariously we're actually going to start, we're going to leave the water to last and we're actually going to start off with some of the more interesting stuff first. So firstly the grid system, large grid, small grid, some people have only just started to spot this around now with the latest Twitter images they've published of the actual buildings but this has been confirmed very early in the sense there is going to be a unified grid system. 
in the sense that it's going to be the same as Medieval Engineers with Compound Blocks, I believe. Obviously, I never played Medieval Engineers. And basically, what you can do is it implies you can basically place small grids on larger grids. And it says the whole grid system of large grid, small grid has kind of been unified. So obviously we can uh, see here that all these blocks here have been broken up into the smaller kind of grid style blocks, like, like so. And this is what actual ships look like under it. And as you can see here, there are large grid blocks, but there are also like small grid aspects built on. So it kind of implies that we can build on... We can build on small grid systems, so the idea is we'd use small grid for the interior, but large grid for the actual blocks itself, in a similar way to how the kind of brass mod works with the... But, uh, yeah, now we're going to move on from the unified grid, and we're going to move on to the whole idea of the block fracturing, which we touched on earlier, but essentially, when you shoot apart a block, like, it actually comes apart properly, like so, and then, uh, this helps with, uh, reconstructing as well, so, it's probably safe to assume that when building it as well, instead of it just being, a, like, a welded exterior, and then when you weld it, it pops into being, I reckon as you weld it, we'll get more of an effect of blocks actually being placed on as you go. Now, similar to this, we are just going to have a look at actual crash systems. As obviously, when, uh, when you crash, the armor and the blocks actually physically destruct. And although there's no particles yet, like, uh, I'm sure there will be. But uh, as Jan says, blocks with the lower integrity actually get destroyed sooner and cause the grid to split apart. And it's clear it's still a work in progress, but honestly, there's a lot of promising work in that area. And here with the destruction testing, uh, we've got the blocks actually disintegrating and the blocks as well getting specific fractures. And you can shoot the blocks and chips uh, can actually fly off. You can still affect the debris, but the debris is mainly only cosmetic and client side. But I think it's still pretty cool. And here as well you can see we've got a little nice little video of the actual ship breaking apart. Now of course go going on from this we've actually had an improvement on like the crash on sanding. But now it's actually on different planets. And honestly I think this looks amazing. You've got the whole thing sliding along the thing. You've got the actual pieces falling off. And honestly like that's amazing. And as stated earlier we've got it against uh, different materials. And how essentially blocks do form against different materials which is all very very cool speaking of crashes what we will cover as well is the fact there is a new speed limit which again no one's talked about but then no one goes through the twitter as thoroughly as i do it seems uh but yeah uh we have a confirmed new speed limit so jana said that v rage supports 300 meters per second and that's early days so i think it does have the potential to go a little higher than that but even though 300 meters per second is like three times what we've got now, I think that's going to be really good. But honestly, I think we have the potential to go faster. But it is a very nice increase. And I'm sure we'll have a new infinite speed mod if we want to go even faster. But uh, be prepared for the physics to break. So now we're also going to go on to the textures and like the race tracing as well. So firstly, with the textures, we've got this very nice looking realistic engine and honestly i think that looks absolutely great we've also got some interesting transparent services so very interesting for like windows as well and maybe like uh frosted glass that could be quite cool also some uh we got some realistic metal pattern here and uh some very interesting armor here as well and we've got the actual engine in the proper skybox instead of looking like it's in the back garden there so here as well we've got more examples of ray tracing inside this time and we have some new blocks here so on the left it looks like we've got an updated refinery and then in the like middle we've got like a rounded updated cryopod and then the block next to it it says uh it looks like it says craft on the front so maybe this is some some sort of crafter and then it has i guess the block on the right could be a, like a new large grid assembler or maybe a large grid a larger grid refinery if the left one's like the basic refinery i think that one could be the large grid refinery now with the improved ray tracing as tech on twitter asked whether or not the performance would take a hit and jan assured him that uh technique runs well even on the old generation so it's interesting that i've tested it on v2 and uh unacceptable minority asked would this be able to be adaptive for cameras and screens 
and Jan said yes. So it's interesting that like, we may have the cameras to LCD script back. Which, for those of you who hung around in, in the community will remember that that was a script at one point, but was later fully removed because of how game-breaking it was. Now, I've also had some uh, ray tracing showcases on a bit of a larger scale, which is very interesting. And again, it looks like we've got a the new cryopod again, and uh, a new ion thruster. As well as that, we've got a very interesting rock formation thing behind, which looks quite cool. That looks to be part of a new mountain or a boulder. With this as well, we've got better global illumination because, uh, I mean, if we just look at this, like, honestly, so much better in here as well with all the reflections on the floor. And it's interesting that we look to have got some new kind of block. I don't know what this block is with the green circle that like looks kind of like an xbox i think possibly a new reactor but uh yeah and it looks like that we have some large grid or super large grid o282 generators in the back there or those could be tanks but the way the texture looks it kind of looks like uh, the small grid o282 generator gone large also with this ray tracing vid as well it seems that in this picture here, we've got a new kind of gateway. We can see a different Ion Thruster design off in the distance there. And then also we've got some more of the Ion Thrusters that we've seen before. So now we're going to go on to planetary features. So firstly, okay, we're going to start with the canyon that we have here. Like, look at this. Very decent start at the canyon. But we also have uh, a start with, like, better mountains. This is one of the earlier ones. But uh, as we go on we'll see more and more of their improvement. We also have the plan for underwater caves as well, and just caving in general. So we will be able to go spelunking, which I uh, I do think will be awesome. Would be nicer with a grapple hook, just saying. But they're starting to slowly add detail and uh, go on. And with here, we've got like the idea of like a desert, but they're basically slowly starting to improve it. And it's interesting that like they're trying to make it less blobby, which is, you can see, it's kind of getting it there. But we've also got the whole rocky terrain here, which looks very cool. And of course, they're slowly solving uh, the height map problem. But honestly, generally, like, this is an interesting, like, looking cave that they've got generated here. I mean, this is only, this is quite early in the sense that this is April the 27th, 2023. This was, like, almost a year, over a year ago. And already, later on, you'll see they've done some massive improvements. So now we, we have boulders as well. That have been started. They've got a boulder generator. I personally think they look like eggs, but uh, that's just me. It's like the aliens have came down to lay eggs, or like the invasion of the very small cubes. But uh, Jan said they've been. They can be quite large and can contain rare ores. Despite like how crowded they look, they will be a lot faster just for planets. And as like confirmed here, it is like procedurally generated. And later on, you can see that they've basically done a massive improvement from earlier with the height map in the sense that this looks like actual graphs now. We've got proper boulders, like the bouldering looks a lot better from before, and it's slowly, slowly improving. And again, later on, that we see even further improvements. And this is May, like this is less than a month later, by the way. This is May 31st, 2023. You can already see they're improving with overhangs and caves and cliffs. As well, they say it's just programmer art, but still, it's getting there. As well as that, we can have a look at the cave system here, which kind of reminds me of how the cave system kind of look in Minecraft. Now, here's the thing as well. Jan says you can find the caves around the planet surface ready to explore, but also the next stage is making it more interesting, like making the entrance pretty, adding some blocks or even encounters. So I kind of feel like they may be making the caves a little more like arc caves. And here as well, Jan said that we like we are considering ra uh, random encounters with underground structures, so we could get like the space engine equivalent of the mine shaft. But anyway, going on to from the cave, we can also see we've got like improved planetary tessellation here, as well as the new skybox, and we're also getting clouds as well. Like there, we got a beautiful video of proper clouds forming, which is absolutely amazing. And here as well, they've uh, added in atmospheric light, which also complements the clouds and make, give them this lovely orange colour. Like, that is beautiful. And we have this whole video of, like, a proper day-night cycle happening with proper realistic-looking clouds. And honestly, I feel like if you took most of the terrain away and just looked it out for clouds, I don't think you'd be able to tell that that was game-generated, apart from, like, the, you know, the massive red blodge. But here as well, we get another look at, like, the kind of tundra arctic biome with a proper lake. And just so much tundra. As well as that, some interesting rock generations, like Giant's Causeway we kind of have there. Like, honestly, this looks 
so amazing. And we'll see as well, like, a big improvement on the valley. And uh, Jan actually confirms that this is a real location taken from Earth that they've actually just re recreated. So that's a challenge for someone in the comments to actually go and find where this particular valley with all these cliffs are, because I have no idea. But I'd love it if someone could actually go find it. And it's not just with the big set pieces as well, like the valleys. They are improving some of the like details for the rocks. And giving like edges, like subtle contours and that sort of thing. And honestly, th this looks so cool. And going on as well here, we got another look at some of the like mountains. And like here is an interesting looking like Devity kind of cliff environment. Looks very cool here. We've got even got a vi nice video of them zooming through it as well as this this is like a um, what they're calling the big fancy crater and our landmarks that should call players to land and explore the area so the fact that they're putting in big craters kind of makes me feel like maybe large asteroids full of resources will actually land here or even like ship crashes will be here that we can just grab and explore possibly to get the new prototech that uh, they said is coming but obviously that's not been released at time of editing so i don't know but still fascinating as well as that going on from this we've been confirmed to have islands as well as in like full separated from the land like islands and honestly like this feels again like it's been plucked out of minecraft like honestly it looks so cool although earlier it was discussed about getting new plants there wasn't much discussion of animals, but Defonten, I hope I'm saying that right, who is the artist working on V-Rage 3, when he's asked about whether they're adding new plants and animals by Santos here, he says hopefully yes. Whereas, interesting, I've also found that Jan's a little mixed on whether or not there will be new animals. I hope there will be, though. I just hope there's not, like, too many to actually crowd the game too much. But, I mean, going on from what we said about plants earlier, they are, like, you know, excited to add in better, like, grass and vegetation. And as obviously we talked about earlier, they are talking about improving the trees. So, I do love the idea of us having vines up the cliffs and, like, different types of trees and that sort of thing. Also, going on regarding the planetary services, uh, the pony says asks whether custom materials can be implemented with mods, and the answer is yes. That gives the idea that you can make, like, a custom planet surface. So, you know, if you wanted to turn a desert planet or, like, Pertam into Gallifrey, you absolutely could just by making the sand more orange. Now, I'm, I'm aware we've talked a lot about what all the features are and then some of them were in earlier stages. But for those of you who were watching the la live stream last month, these images will be familiar to you as they were actually covered. In the sense of like, this has changed from V-Rage 2 to V-Rage 3. As well as that, like, all the visuals have been kind of improved and it looks amazing. But uh, here they are talking about like making the whole planet like transitions, like really seamless as well. And we've also had this video released of just walking on the actual planet. The terrain, bits of it, like, look a bit naff. But, like, the rocks especially look kind of cool. Like, the sand. Like, it could do with improvement, but you can still clearly see it's clearly sand. And, like, honestly, th this looks so cool. Now, again, some of you may have seen these images on stream. But here we've got, like, a full progress on, like, how the clouds look. We've also got the island down there surrounded by water. Got a closer look at the island here with the actual clouds. I mean, that looks amazing. Uh, now here as well, we've also got the image of the whole planet with all the clouds. And as well, we can see the unified grid system in action with a lot of the small grid and large grid uh, kind of grids together, essentially. And here we are. We also have a further uh, look at cliffs and crevices here which look absolutely beautiful. A couple of more looks at the desert terrain or like as Jan have called it the rocky savanna, and it says here almost desert but with a bit of grass so they kind of look how the grass looks in the summer when it's got no water which is interesting because I kind of hope that the terrain may kind of change with uh like the rain in the sense that this will become like maybe greener it'd be cool if they actually implemented proper seasons but anyway now we've rushed through all the other features we're now going on to water so firstly to get it out of the way with water, yes, we're getting oceans, lagoons, ponds, all of that lovely jazz, and so on. But we're also getting a couple of uh, other interesting things as well. We've got, got it confirmed that we can take water into space, and the water does actually form bubbles, which is interesting. It's confirmed that water will do damage as well. So the idea that you can create waves and storms sort of tsunamis is interesting and the uh, whole idea that water can be contained and we're basically confirmed that we can get water tanks 
to take water with us into space. Now here, as we were talking about oceans and seas, here we are, we've got a lovely example of a large water body. And here we've got like a lovely little simulation of the sun going over it, the water glittering and how it changes, which honestly, amazing. Honestly, there are a cool few problems here and there with the ray marching, but uh, they're, get, they're getting to fix it. But the good news is the water will actually reflect. I believe this image is actually familiar to quite a few people because uh, everyone's seen it demonstrated. I think Luca did a video about this, but they actually did like a whole dam with uh, water leaking through and just shooting it with a fighter just to see uh, what would happen. And you can go and watch that whole video yourself over on the Twitter. It is quite stunning to see what the water does. And now, of course, we're getting to the more exciting thing. We do have ships. Like, we do have, like, this which box here that Jan demonstrated, which actually does float. So we will be able to build, like, massive boat and ship and just sail them around. And we've also had water pumps and conveyors for water confirmed within, like, maybe dedicated pipes so we can build underwater and just pump water out the actual structure itself. Jan also says we'll probably get a water hand in, like, similar to a voxel hand. What's well, also interesting is how they're adding wind to it now, so, like, the actual wind will affect the water being moved around. Now, Jan's also said regarding the water transportation, now we should be getting, now we may be getting some form of water cycling, it says water should boil or freeze. Boiling, and like, an enemy's water supply could be quite fascinating as a concept, but... We've also had like the demonstration of underwater bases as well here. This does actually cause pressure on the glass. Provided you shoot it enough, uh, it will actually shatter. Which is going to be fascinating for underwater base raids in the idea that, you know, you're going to have to blow out the windows and then don scuba to go and raid bases. Now, as well as this, we also have the confirmation of waterfalls, which I do like, and like actual rivers as well. The idea as well that we'll be able to like float boats basically like further inland. The idea of being able to launch a raid on the ground base from a boat could be quite interesting. And open up certain levels of trade as well. Regarding the underwater bases, Jean also shared what it will kind of look like if looking underwater. Which honestly looks kind of very terrifying but very cool. The final thing as well is we do have this lovely picture of like the dam and the aqueduct. That we've seen already. These have also been quite popular because they've revealed several new blocks, like this water tank here, potential like chimneys or rotors, what looks to be like another water tank over there. And here as well, we have it in closer. And what these could potentially be the new water pipes, or one of these blocks could even be the water pump, which is fascinating. We can also see what looks like a new gate, possibly a new gate block over there. Regardless, it looks like a very, very exciting future to come for Space Engineers 2. But of course, no future can be without its negatives. So we're going to go on to what we are not getting in Space Engineers 2. And finally, we come to what's not being implemented. And there are a couple of things. Firstly, dynamic voxels on grids. So the kind of idea that you can kind of shape blocks or buildings that will cut, I guess kind of like voxel hands, but on the actual building. This could have been like really good for kind of organic blocks or as well as that if you have a block which doesn't fit in a particular space you could just literally pop it in and it would kind of mould to the area. We're not getting that unfortunately which is a shame because I would really love that idea. Next V-Rage 3 is not supporting individual colour retexturing so you can't have like one face of a cube to be like gunmetal and the other to be like wood to do like a cool inner and outer effect. We're not getting that, which is unfortunate. But we can kind of replicate that with the armor panels, so I don't think it's that much of a loss. Anyway, despite it being multi-platform, there is no plan for like a Linux port, but I don't think that will affect anyone too much, to be honest. We've all got like Xbox, PS4, PS5 and PCs. I don't really get why anyone would try and run Space Engineers on Linux, but each to their own. Next thing, uh, no moving voxels with V-Rage. So no moving asteroids, no spinning planets, or anything like that, to be honest. That means on planets, all the boulders will be static, and you won't be able to, like, you know, push them down a cliff. To be fair, I do think that some of the voxels should be able to, like, move in a sense. Like, I do want to be able to just push a boulder off a mountain onto an enemy base, and they can do nothing about it. Anyway, moving on. Orbital mechanics. Now, Jan said here he doesn't act they haven't actually planned orbital mechanics. That doesn't mean we won't get them, but I do feel like... 
it's difficult to do orbital mechanics when you can't have moving voxels of such. Like, you could do it with ships, but it's going to be interesting. And also, because there's no spinning planets, or, or like, the sun won't m probably won't move, it, it's going to be interesting to see how it's done. However, as well, we've also got to take into account that orbital mechanics are technically in Space Engineers 1. As someone did actually prove, you can do an orbit with a satellite. The only trouble was you needed the infinite speed mod, and I think it the orbit started decaying a lot quicker than expected. So I think it only managed like one and a half rotations before it fell out of the sky. So we could potentially see an improvement. We'll see. When someone commented orbital planets on Twitter, Sharon replied with like the thinking emoji. So I'd say the jury's not out when it comes to orbital mechanics, as there is that possibility. Now, just going back to water and rain, rain. Considering the improvements to the weather system, we are probably getting rain, but the rain won't actually affect like the amount of water on lakes. I feel like though we may be able to harvest the actual rainwater for use in tanks. Like I believe they'll have like a water catcher block, which when it's raining will like slowly increase the amount of water within it. But yeah, no to making rain overflow lakes and reservoirs and that sort of thing. Also, can you imagine the pain of having to doing that? Because if they coded that in, they'd have to put in evaporation as well. Otherwise, you'd have to keep building your dam higher and higher and higher. So, I do think that's a good idea. What they're doing is just leaving that out. Now, uh, going back onto the Voxels, uh, no Voxel air tightness. Would be cool if not planned. But, honestly, like, I don't quite get how you would fully evaluate that. Like, I think it'd be a really neat idea. But, yeah, I don't think they're doing it yet. Now, here's the thing. They, are you keeping the speed limit to 100 meters per second? Jan here says he's not sure yet. However, he later says, as we've discussed earlier, that the V-Ray speed limit is 300 meters per second. So, that's probably going to be the max. However, they may set it like a little lower, maybe 200 or that sort of thing, in order to... So, they may just play around with the speed limit, but we know like 300 meters per second is like a kind of safe max. That we know of, they may put it lower for stability reasons. But yeah, that about wraps it up for this video. So, but anyway, thank you all for watching everyone, and good night!